Hello everyone, Poor Cynic here with Tab on Tyrant Reviews, and this is Card Wars, the Adventure Time card game by Cartoon Network. Card Wars is, surprise surprise, a competitive card game. You control one of the cartoon's various characters as they faced off against each other in Card Wars. You play characters, buildings, and spells in an effort to reduce your opponent's health to zero. If you win, congratulations, you're the cool guy, but beware as the dweeb cup awaits those who fall in battle. I have so many conflicted thoughts about this game. It excels in many areas, but falls short in many others. And it's just, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Let's just go over some of the things here on the screen, because there's a lot of things, and it's kind of complicated. Along the top, we have basically the hero you have selected at the moment, their level, the amount of energy you have, which is the hearts. This game has an energy system. It's not awful, but it's just the fact that it has an energy system at all is not great. Uh, then we have the amount of cards you have right there. That's the box with the 21 out of 50 next to it. Amount of gems, that's your super currency. And then the amount of coins, that's your normal currency. And then going along the bottom here, first we have the gear. That's going to be your settings and your options. I have not been playing for a while, and I will not take a break. I just opened this up. Right, you have your credits, you have Cartoon Network stuff, you have settings, and you have... Uh, codes you can redeem and I'll probably have to blank out that ID bit in the middle I'm not sure then we have this gate that'll take you to daily dungeons or the daily gift and I believe I have the daily gift right now so this will give me basically one of these things around the edge here it can be hearts and cards and gems and whatnot let's see what we get No whammies. Oh. 10,000 coins doesn't really help me all that much. Would have preferred a lot of hearts or ideally gems or something. But okay. Coins. Now we have the middle button, this box. This is where you basically this is the meat of the, the card building or deck building aspect. Card box shows you essentially just all the cards you have collected. Not in any particular order, although you can sort it. You can look at your creatures, you can look at your spells, and your buildings, and your heroes. I obviously only have Jake and Finn at the moment. Now you can sell your cards for coins, you can uh, craft cards using other cards. So like, if I had, just going along the bottom here, you can see the stuff I have that's new. Like, I could combine the Cornball and the Wandering Bald Man to create the Travelin' Farmer. I already have a Travelin' Farmer, and I would prefer to keep my, uh, my Cornball, because it's actually pretty good if you use it right. But otherwise, yeah, nothing there. And then there's the deck building aspect itself. You obviously have a deck size, and but other than that, you can pretty much add whatever you like. It's good to... Obviously, builds, build your decks with something in mind. You can change the landscapes that you're going to have available. They come, obviously, the cornfields, the useless swamp, the blue plains, the sandy lands, and the nice lands. Well, we're going to stick with this layout right now. It allows me to use all the corn creatures I have, plus the scattering of... Actually, yeah, the scattering of swamp creatures, which is actually just the wandering bald man and the mace stump. And then there's the rainbow creatures and buildings that can be played uh, wherever. Alright, let's back into there. Then we have the bag of gems. I can restore my energy, which costs one gem, which is not terrible, but I prefer not there be an energy system at all. Increasing your inventory costs 500 coins or one gem. That's, that's not bad, you know. Um, so I could... Bump it up by five there. And then the gems themselves. One gem is a dollar. Goes all the way up to 50 gems for $30. Hmm. 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 <laughs> There's a very heavy in-app purchase emphasis on this game, which doesn't make a lot of sense because it's a premium title. This costs, last I checked, $3.99 in the App Store. And I do not like premium titles that throw on a lot of in-app purchases. I don't mind if it's something cosmetic, but this is an actual aspect of the game. It's getting cards and energy and whatnot. That feels more like it should be in a freemium title. And then we have the chest. This is where you go. Essentially, you can spend gems or coins to unlock these different things. 
Like the cool chest was that it was 10,000. So basically, uh, the money I just won, I could spend that on that. Or three gems to unlock the, the holiday chest. You know what? Let's open up the cool chest. What do we got here? We got Ethan Allfire, which I have like four of, so that's great. That was a good use of my coinage. Awesome. Okay, so let's actually just go into battling. Let's see here, we have Deck Wars, that's, I believe it's sort of the versus, I... Yeah, it's the versus aspect. I'm not really into the online versus aspect. There's leaderboards. There's the special Fiona and Cake adventure, which is just add-on DLC. And then we have the actual quests themselves. Where you play through the land of Ooh, challenging the other characters to card games. You can see here, as you zoom in, as you see here, each character has three stars underneath them. It's essentially different requirements, and if you can beat them by filling that requirement, you will earn that star. I don't know what the stars do. I guess by beating the second one, you earn a gem, but otherwise it's a little vague um, what exactly this is meant to do. You will occasionally get also get cards for beating them. Like for beating Marceline here, depending on the luck of the draw, I could get one of these cards along the side. Like the Strawberry Butt, or the Poultry Geist, or the Husker Worm. It also says what your special ability is, in this case Finn's, is gain two extra magic points for one turn. And what Marceline's is, which is all of my creatures gain, all of her creatures gain plus two attack for three turns. So let's jump into, let's go, let's go face this, let's go face Princess Bubblegum. And yeah, it looks like she is going to be a health oriented kind of character, as far as I can tell, because her special ability is fully healing all of her creatures. But uh, yeah, it looks like that's going to be the way to go. I could change out to Jake. And I think that's what I might do because I like Jake's ability a bit more. Especially since I have so many corn creatures. All my corn creatures will gain plus three attack. So, is there anything else I wanted to add? No, I think that's good. 15 minutes to recharge one energy. It's not awful. I've seen better though. We'll say... Sometimes the character animation is not great, and Marceline's animation is really poor, and Finn's also kind of. P uh, Princess Bubblegums was actually a little bit better there. But for, for Finn and Marcy, it was almost just like they had three expressions and they would just flicker between them. Like, really bad stop motion. So let's play some landscapes. And let's see who goes, who gets to lay down cards first. I will get to lay down cards first. All right, so we go over the things here on screen. At the very top, you have the, the shield with, next to the blue bar. That's essentially your health points. The number in the purple sphere, that is your magic points. Essentially, everything costs magic to play or activate. And once you've used up your magic, you're done with the turn. Three turns, that's how long it's going to take for, uh, for both me and Princess Bubblegum to unlock our special ability. It's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. Star, yeah, that's the current quest. And I can pause it, obviously, if I feel the need. So let's lay down some things here. Let's lay down the Wandering Bald Man in the Swamp. And let's put down the Corn Ball there. And that's going to take it right to Princess Bubblegum's turn, because I don't get to attack on the first turn. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be fair. All right, laying down Fluffy Pillar. All right. Now, when you're defending, you have to time it. Essentially, when you're attacking or defending, you have to time your defense or attack, essentially. It's, you know, button pressing and whatnot, and I did not do it well there, and I got beat up by those caterpillars. All right, so I'm... I'm going to lay down two Ethan All Fires because they're going to get free attacks, so that's going to be 10 damage against Princess Bubblegum right there. And that leaves me with one energy, which I cannot... Well, no, I can lay down a building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down the comfy cave behind this guy right here, the cornball. 
Now I'm going to get to attack. And if I get... You can see there's the dull green and the bright green. Dull green is ordinary. Bright green is critical. And the red is a miss. God, I'm not doing great. I'm choking under the pressure. All right, Angel Heart. Choose one of your creatures and heal at three points. Oh, and the Astral Fortress creature, and then laying its plus four defense. Oh my gosh, it has so much health now. Okay, if you get the perfect on the defense, you will actually counter and deal damage to that creature. God, man, I'm doing so bad. There we go. And if you just get it in the normal green, it'll just block it. All right, uh, I guess I'm going to put another corn ball down there. And now I can actually floop one of my characters. You might remember this is actually based on an episode of Adventure Time, if you're not aware. Uh, the Card Wars episode, appropriately enough. I recommend that you watch the series, by the way. It's very, very entertaining, very funny. I'm a big fan. But flooping essentially allows for a special ability or a special bonus. Like if I floop one of the corn balls, I will get plus one attack. And is, I believe that's just a permanent ability. Essentially a permanent buff, because you can keep applying it over and over. You floop the, uh, the, but the bald man, you do two damage to the creature in the opposing lane. And Ethan all fires is I lower the attack of the opposing creature by three and destroy uh, all fire. I don't want to do that. So I am going to instead, I'm going to floop the bald man, do two damage to this worm and hope that I can get lucky with the, with the actual attack. Because that'll be able to wipe it out. And... That'll be all I can do. I don't want to spend my last point. So just going to go for it. Boom, that takes care of that heart. Ooh, I got a chest. Good, that's a card. It takes care of that. And there. That was right on the edge. And all I need to do is that. All right, so that's two of her cards eliminated. But she's going to lay down more. Yes, you just said that. Ah, you and your healing, you and your healing abilities. Oh, and you can buff them too? That's no good. Ugh. Not doing great. Really not doing great on the defense. Oh, come on, that was so close. Oh my gosh. This has not been a spectacular round for me. All right, so I'm gonna drop down this rainbow creature, which is the ordinary ninja. That is gonna deal three damage to the creature in the opposing lane. And I have four extra magic, and I can activate my ability, which gives all my corn-based monsters, essentially at this point, the corn balls, and it'll give them a bonus, which I think I may do. I don't think this, you know, that does not cost magic, but I'm gonna activate this. All my corn creatures gain plus three attack. And I'm going to start flooping as well. First, I'm going to floop you. So I'm going to deal three damage to that flying heart. Because I'm a ninja. And I'm going to floop this fella right here. Because that means I can now take out that heart in one blow. Provided I get it right. There we go. Down to three. Away you go, and I got coins for that. Perfect. Critical times two damage, and one of those right there. Ah, uh, she just keeps laying down cards. And now she's gonna activate her special ability, and now everybody is getting healed. Ah, uh, the Cerebral Bloodstorm. There goes one of my corn balls. Great. Fortunately, it was not in a lane that was Defended! Shit. Oh my gosh. There we go. That's a nice counter there. Man, I am just not doing great here. Alright, so... I'm gonna lay down the Traveling Former there. 5-5 five, five, plus 1 attack for each adjacent lane, but I don't have any empty adjacent lanes. And I guess I'm gonna drop this Cornball there. And 
I'm going to floop this fella right here. Now, should I floop the bald man and get an opportunity to take out that heart? That might be for the best. Or should I floop the other cornball? No, I'm going to floop the bald man. So that way I can try to eliminate this heart before it heals anyone else. All right, we're ready to go. There we go. One of those. And perfect. Away you go. All right. Sometimes the controls of this game can be a bit unresponsive at times, especially when you're selecting cards. But um, it's not all the time. It's a bit unpredictable. All right, so now I have no empty spaces, so I can just floop. In this case, I'm going to start buffing up my cornballs and doing as much damage to, to peoples directly as I can. All right, that is all I can do. So let's start swinging away. Oh, that was so close to being critical. Yeah, that was a good hit. All right, just six more. Four more. I should be able to wrap this up, provided... Yeah, this should be. This is definitely attainable. Oh my gosh, with the healing. Oh, that was not even close. I, I need to focus. Ah. And there goes my super buffed cornball. Alright, I'm going to... You see there, I was tapping and it did not respond right away. I didn't want to enlarge that. So... Yeah, I'm going to drop Ethan there, because he might be able to take out that worm in one hit. And I'm going to floop the cornball. This, I've, I've already pretty much won it, because as soon as the that cornball attacks, I'm going to wipe Meebles out. And wait, is there anything else I wanted to do? No. We're just going to go. And enough of your healing BS. Bye-bye. And Sayonara. Okay, yeah, I'm the cool guy, I win. Going to get some coins and XP, and we're going to get one looted card. In this case, the Wall of Ears. Floop one magic, inflict two damage to this creature, and gain two attack. Wow, okay, this is a purely defense creature looks like so i can just essentially if i want to block a very damaging something that's very damaging beating a heart quest for the first time will throw your heart energy to full thank you jake all right the battle actually took a bit longer than i thought it was so i'm going to bring up the final verdict now card wars to me is an almost perfect representation of the term mixed bag on the one hand the card game itself feels very well put together it's a good mix of challenging and creative with strange characters and nice card craft mechanics. You know, it looks great. It's very thematic and, you know, it's it's a it's a fun game by itself. But those positive aspects are diminished by all the less than stellar points this game has. Progression is appallingly slow, especially for a premium title. The controls can be slow to respond and the character animation is not spectacular. And arguably worst of all, this doesn't feel like Adventure Time. The characters are there and they occasionally speak and it's got the Adventure Time design splattered all over it, but the game doesn't have the spirit of the show. When you're making an adaptation of a show or a film or anything to a game, it should be more than just cosplay. It should have something of the show that was, that was there. And this doesn't really have that for me. I don't feel like this is Adventure Time. This could have been a generic silly monster card battling game, and if it were, I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more, but because it's Adventure Time, I expected something a bit, 
more from it. I'm disappointed. I'm gonna have to say that you let this one fall by the wayside. It's not completely unacceptable, but neither is it algebraic. I've been Poor Cynic, and I will see you all next time. Ta-ta, and farewell. Uh -huh.